Good morning, Tabernacle family. I said good morning. Come on, everybody, stand up. I know people are still coming in. We want to take a moment to welcome you to the tab. We are just so thrilled that you are here. <laughs> Everybody's saying hello. Come on in from the rafters or the parking lot. People are walking everywhere. <laughs> I take a minute to welcome our online viewing audience. We are so honored that you choose to worship with us and make this your home church all over the world. And we pray that everything that we feel in this room this morning would translate beyond this beautiful space right into your home or your workplace, wherever you're at around the world today. Well, Tab, are you ready to worship this morning? I don't know. I, I'm trying not to be too excited because I got our, we got our new lighting system. <laughs> or half of our new lighting system, I should say. And so I'm trying not to be way too excited about the wrong things this morning, but the kid in me is like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so we're gonna try a bunch of things and come up with how the tab's supposed to look right now, but we just invite you to just look past it, come into worship with us this morning. We're here for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And every time he's in the room, all of him walks in the room. So if you need healing in your body, deliverance, you know, you need provision in your family, you need wisdom from the Lord. If he's in the room, all of him is in the room for everything that you need, everything that, that is needed around the world today. When he walks into the situation, the Prince of Peace walks into the situation. And so this morning we celebrate his life and we want to offer him our complete gaze, our complete focus, our heart, so that we can host his presence in this house. Amen. Oh, come on, amen. amen. There we go. There you are today. <laughs> mighty, mighty in voice this morning. Let's begin our time of worship anchored in the scripture this morning. We're going to read um, a couple parts of Psalm 148 out loud together. So let's give voice to this this morning. Praise the Lord. All right, do better than that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all stars of light. Praise him, highest heavens and the waters that are above the heavens. Let the praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He has also established them forever and ever. He has made a decree which will not pass away. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven. And he has lifted up a horn for his people. Praise all his godly ones, even for the sons of Israel, a people near to him. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
return. He shall return and power to Falling down in worship. 
worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all have gone before us, oh, and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Because your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your stands above them all, above all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all, your name, cause your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name, oh it stands above them
lift your hands to the Lord. Just out loud, begin to lift your praise to him all across the house. Church, I want us to understand this. Listen, we're not, we're not singing songs. We're ascending to the throne room of God where we are invited to come as priests of the Lord to decree a thing in the spirit. Now, we're in a Psalm 2 moment right now in the earth. The kings of the earth are gathering against the Lord. The kings of the earth are in uproar, but the lion of Judah is about to roar. The lion of Judah is about to release his voice. And he's looking for a people who will prepare the way of the Lord. He's looking for a people who will cut through the noise and bring a sound who will cut through the noise and bring a sound. And you're part of that sound. You're part of that sound. So I want you to lift your hands. I want you to lift your voice. I want you to open your mouth. I want you to begin to declare the high praises of God. There's a shout inside of you. Let out that shout. There's a cry inside of you. There's a shofar inside of you. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God, God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sounding of the shofar. The Lord. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name, it stands above. His name all. is above Hamas this morning. Enthrone him, enthrone him high. And possessions, your name, it stands above. Let's go. 
that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your 
How we overcome. Somebody's got to get your praise on this morning. Are you ready? Here we go.
this valley sing. Come on now. Your hand is lifted me up. I stand on higher ground. Yeah, I hear you now. Come on. To my heart make this valley sing. You have turned. I'm born again today. Ready? This is how we overcome. 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 This is how we some dancers up here. Come on, I need some, come on. Get up front here, you dancers. Get out here, get moving. We're gonna dance like David danced. Here we go, this is how. This is how we Sylvia's up here. Sylvia's up here. She's battling cancer. She's battling cancer right now. Cancer treatments in and out. What's she doing? She's praising the Lord up here. Because her victory is in her praise. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, God has a breakthrough for you. This is how we are. God is our refuge and our strength. 
a very present help in times of trouble. Very present help in your time of trouble. Close your eyes, lift your hands. Very present help in times of trouble. God is your refuge. God is your strength. And he's a very present help in the midst of whatever you face. God is a refuge. God is your strength. Turn to him right now and see him face to face. I'm covered under your wings in the shadow of your love. In trouble. My help comes from you. My help comes from you, maker of heaven, creator of the world, creator of the earth. Sing it again. I lift. I lift my sing with me. I lift my eyes up. Men, you'll start. Sing it with me. Men. I, I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? Ladies, ladies, would you sing? Sisters.
Somebody better shout. Somebody better shout. Lift up a shout. Praise to Adonai. Gives way and the mountains move into 
God, we will be fully mobilized. We will be fully determined, God, to fall in step with you. We give you our yes. Would you give God your yes? All across the internet today, all across the web, our, uh, come on, give him your yes. God, I'm all in. God, I'm all in. God, I'm all in. God, I'm giving you my yes. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, before you're seated this morning, I want you to find 36 people. I want you to look them deep in the eye, and I want to tell them, victory is ours in Jesus' name. Come on, tell them. 36 people, victory is ours in Jesus' name. Victory is ours in Jesus' mighty name. We bless you. Keep hanging with us, musicians. Don't leave us. Be seated for just a moment.
Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. You say, wow, this isn't a normal church service. Everybody say goodbye to normal. Goodbye, normal. How many of you are hungry for a move of God? About the presence of God, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now it's usually now or in a few minutes. What's better? Okay. Well, we have some special guests this morning. I'm going to introduce them in just a few moments. But before they come, he's special, but he's not a guest. That is Pastor Doug Reed. Give him a big God bless you. Always, always so good to see Bishop hop up on the piano and take us in, right? So good. Well, just a couple quick announcements and then we'll receive this morning's offering. We had an incredible time at Trunk or Treat yesterday. So thank you to all the volunteers. Thank you to the kids workers and Chloe and her amazing team. It was fantastic. And we have some pictures. Go ahead. Yeah, we had some good ones. We had a couple of cars that were Jonah and the whale, which was pretty good. We had some apple cider. It was great. So good. If you missed it, you got a plan to be there. Next year, we had over 600 people come through, and uh, it was just incredible. Get to meet so many families and shake hands, and just an awesome time. Thank you to everyone that participated, donated. We actually had to run out to the store twice to buy candy because people just kept coming, and we kept running out. It was wonderful. Uh, part of it was I had a game at my trunk, and it involved Eagles cornhole boards and cornhole bags. And I just enjoyed the thrill of watching Bills fans have to throw Eagles bags into an Eagles board. It brought joy to my heart. And yeah, I know. We took care of the Dolphins for you, okay? At least give me a little credit. But uh, my boys, the thing was, is you had to get one in the hole, and then I gave you a king-size candy bar, and I left for 20 minutes, and all of a sudden, all the king-size candy bars were gone, because my boys were helping everybody put it in the hole, because they wanted to give them away and wanted everyone to feel good. And our king-size plan went out the, out the window. But it was a great time. Thank you again to everybody that was uh, a part of that. Um, coming up, we have Christmas. Can you believe that? Who's done with their Christmas shopping? Where are you at so we can throw something at you? <laughs> now, I, Christmas is right around the corner, and every year, I hope you mark your calendar, the first weekend, December 2nd and 3rd this year, is the Tabernacle Christmas Musical. It's an incredible time. We have a full orchestra. We have a choir. Uh, I think it's one of the bigger choirs we've had in, in quite some time. And uh, it's just going to be a great, great time. Bring the whole family, friends. Um, that's the second and third at 7 p.m. Um, we are also looking uh, for some baskets that we will uh, raffle off. So if you're a business and have done that before, we'd invite you to see Sharon Judah. She was up here uh, a moment ago, right there. So see Sharon after uh, the service and let her know, hey, I, we want to give a basket again this year. Um, even if you're not a business and you just want to put a basket together, we would love that. It helps us bless the community uh, as a part of the Christmas musical. And then last but not least, uh, we appreciate your flexibility this past Thursday as we had to make an adjustment uh, to Bishop's recording for the Israel uh, strategic training. And that will happen this Tuesday night at 6.30. So we will uh, be together for the Israel strategic training. Now I have to tell you, some of you missed the first one. Um, they are out online and there are clips of them online. And so you can get them at Bishop's uh, social media. You can go to uh, his public figure page on Facebook or on Instagram and please share those out. I've had a number of pastor friends around the country message me and they were like, this is so good. When is the next one uh, coming out? And so uh, tune into that, be a part of that. If you can be here Tuesday night, we'd love to have you. But even if you can't, those are coming out very quickly on social media and they're helping us to stay informed on all that God is doing uh, in Israel. And I believe this Tuesday night, we're going to tackle some of the scriptures of the ingathering and uh, the seven reasons Christians should support Israel. So you want to be here. Yep. We have over, uh, over 2,000 people that have gone through 
the one that we already did. So from the little oh, wow. sanctuary here, the hundred of us that came, over 2,000 people have already gone through those trainings. That's the impact that we're having from right here. Beautiful. So make sure you guys catch that, watch it online, share it out. It's really, really great content and information helping us stay uh, in the loop. Well, this morning our ushers are going to come and we are going to receive our tithes and offering. Uh, if you missed last week, uh, there'll be a, a video I'm sure that we'll throw out on social media. You got an opportunity to see the new stuff that God is doing in our Tab Food Pantry. And uh, so excited about all of that. And we're going to continue as our project offering this morning, sowing seed into our food pantry. Uh, Thanksgiving is coming, Christmas is coming, and there are families that we get to come alongside, about 100 families every week that we get to help fill up their carts with groceries, we get to bless, we get to be a part of that, but especially as we come around the holidays, no one should have to sit down at Thanksgiving or Christmas and not be able to put food on the table. And so as you sow a seed this morning, uh, put in your project offering, it's gonna go to our tab food pantry. You can give a number of different ways. You can give online, cash app. You can use the envelope, make your checks out to the tabernacle. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we have the privilege and honor of partnering with your will on the earth. And we get to do that by writing a check, by sowing seed, by serving, by being a part. Lord, we get to do our small part, but in stepping into your kingdom, we get to see kingdom fruit. And so, Lord, we pray that you'd multiply the loaves and the fishes this morning and you allow us to continue to impact not just the tabernacle, not just Western New York, God. We're a global church. Lord, we are making impact all around the world. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. All blessing, all honor, all blessing, all power. God forever all glory all honor all blessing all power all wisdom dominion is your God table of the Lord. I invite the pastors please to join me here. Be seated for just a moment as the pastors come. It's such an honor to have Bishop in the house with us. And uh, Wanda, Bishop, we love you. We thank God for you. And uh, you've lived you've, you've lived through some wars and this yeah. is another one. I have been. I've been through. I go all the way back to World War II. Mm -hmm. I remember when the war was declared in the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had no idea whether we were going to win or lose. Yeah. We had to believe God. Yeah. In the midst of all of that, we believe God. Keep our eyes on him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's an honor to have Apostle Dwayne Harden with us uh, this morning. He's been with us several years ago, but far too long, but pre-COVID, I think, is when you were with us. 
And I'm going to introduce him again in a moment, but we're so honored to have him here with us from Atlanta. Uh, you received the elements when you uh, came in this morning, but if you somehow missed them, just slip your hand up and one of the ushers will be happy to serve you. Uh, any of the ushers will be happy to serve anyone who may have not received the elements this morning. Amen. It came to me this morning in the first service that perhaps the most powerful act of spiritual warfare we can engage in is coming to this table. This table is a reaffirmation of our covenant with God. This is a curse-breaking table. This is a blessing-restoring table. This table becomes, in a sense, the doorway between earth and heaven. When we recognize that there are not two elements here, we see the element of the bread and the cup, but there's a third element that's invisible to the naked eye, but oh so important, and it's the element of a faith-filled heart. And you say, Bishop, my faith this morning is shaking. I've got a doctor's diagnosis. I've got a pink slip from my job this week. I've got financial trouble, family trouble. Bishop, my faith is weak. I want to give you good news. All God needs is faith as a mustard seed. He just needs a little bit of faith. And if you don't have faith this morning, you're in the right place. You want to know why? Because you know how faith comes? By hearing the word of God. That's what you've been hearing and reciting in worship. It's why it's so urgent that you're a participant in worship and not a spectator. Why? I can't sing your song for you. See, there's a song that's going to bring you deliverance in your situation, but it's not going to be when you hear the song. It's going to be when you sing the song because you're lining up your breath, your will, your mind, will, and emotions with the blessing of God, and you're releasing that into your life. There's a praise that you've got to do. There's a, there's a shout you've got to make. We can help. We can lead. First service, one of the, one of the faithful, long-term people here, he came up to me and said, remember, Bishop, how Jericho fell. Jericho falls with the shout. It, fall, it falls with the praise to our God. And that's what we're engaged in this morning. So we come to this table with these elements and the element of a faith-filled heart. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. As often as you come together, take and eat. My spirit, my presence, my life will be with you. Jesus didn't leave us a philosophy or a doctrine or an institution. Jesus left, him, left himself with us in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And he's present this morning in each and every one of us and in the mystical body of Christ, both around the world and in heaven, the cloud of witnesses that is cheering us on. We are united in faith with all of those who've gone before. After the same manner, he lifted up the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Not the new covenant that displaces the old one, but that fulfills the old covenant and that takes the blessing of God that rested on Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and now lets it come to places like Lackawanna and Orchard Park and Williamsville and Clarence and Depew and Lancaster. That the blessing of God was not only to be contained in the four corners of Israel, but it was to go to the four corners of the earth through the life and power of Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth. Aren't you glad that that covenant found its way to you this morning? So before we partake, can I invite you to take a moment wherever you are, bow your heads, close your eyes, and let this be a moment of consecration, heads bowed, eyes closed, a moment between you and your God. Your God is seeking you. Your God is drawing near to you, draw near to him in this moment.
May we stand. Thank you. It was over half a century ago that I stood at this pulpit in another place, another place in the city, but this pulpit, and broke my first bread with his people. Today we break bread again the most significant thing that we can possibly do is partake of his supper. We break this bread together. We come together to celebrate your body, celebrate your blood, and partake of both of them. Bless this small wafer May it become to us the body of Christ. May we eat of your very life in Jesus' name. Let us eat together. significant thing about the blood is it speaks and it speaks to DNA when we're born again we're regenerated regenetically aligned it's the blood that determines the genealogy and so when we drink, we are drinking in alignment to our true genealogy, unscathed by sin. Let us drink. Hallelujah. Would you remain standing while we declare this statement of faith from Deuteronomy. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchut Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hug the person behind you as you're seated this morning. I'm going to bring you up in a second. Amen. It is such a special morning in the Lord's house. We love all of you watching online. You're a part of this family, part of the church family. If you've got a prayer requests, there's a pastor there praying with you. And we love you and we bless you. We're glad that you are uh, watching uh, this morning. Um, Jacqueline, where's Jacqueline? Stand up, Jacqueline. This is Jacqueline Scott. She's one of our young people. She's amazing. And uh, she heads up all of our social media. We've got a little bit of a mid-range thing going on. Um, and uh, Jacqueline heads up all of our social media. She understands how all that works. I wouldn't know an algorithm if it came and hit me upside the head, but somehow that's the new world. But in just the past two weeks, um, we have had, in two weeks, we have had three million individual views of our social media, three million views in two weeks. Somebody say, God's made this place a trumpet. God's made this place a voice, okay? We're a glocal house, glocal, global and local. And we're speaking that word of the Lord out and people are listening and responding. 
Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Thank you for all that you do for my family and I. We love you and we thank God for you. We're so happy to have dear friends, really extended family um, with us today. Um, some special guests. Uh, there we are. Whatever you just did is perfect. Something just changed. That's great. Perfect. Um, and uh, we all love Pastor Judy Shaw, and she is such a blessing. And through Judy Shaw, uh, we met uh, Aaron and Jessica Mayfield. They are from Atlanta, Georgia, which is just like Buffalo, only different. And, <laughs> and uh, uh, they came up and Aaron said, now, I want to know, is it Anchor Bar or Duff's or what is it? You know, we were, we were getting the, the grilling on all of that. Um, but I have fallen in love with this couple. Um, I, I liked Aaron when I met him, and then I met Jessica. I said, this man married up. He did really, really well. This is an anointed, anointed couple, and they're two beautiful, beautiful children. Pastor Doug, just stand up and show off Michael there. Here is Michael. <laughs> oh, there's Gloria. Stand up. Say hi, Gloria. There she is. She is a princess. But uh, would you make welcome? I, I, it's the first time here, but I'm praying that it is not their last. I'd like you to make welcome Aaron and Jessica Mayfield as they come. God bless you all. You may be seated. You may be seated. Uh, babe, why don't you say something first? <laughs> right? Um, I am so glad to be here this morning with you all. Bishop, thank you again. You all, you know, when you look up hospitality, I see each and every one of your faces. You all are some servers and some lovers, some doers. And it's been amazing since we've been here. Nothing short of amazing. Um, so great to spend time with you all. Um, I will have to say, Bishop um, and Madam Reed, meeting you all yesterday and spending time with you all just for a bit was so wonderful. It was so amazing. We got to get about uh, half the tour was um, narrated by Bishop himself. And when I tell you, you just feel like you just want to stop time and sit down, you know, crisscross applesauce with a blanket and just sit and soak it all in. And we were just so blessed and amazed to be around you all and to see the work that has been put into the city and to the kingdom of God at large. We were amazed. We were amazed. We were amazed. We are lovers of laborers, and you all are some laborers, you know, and we're so great. And to pass that on to Bishop, you are a laborer as well. Pastor Doug, you guys are laborers. So this is a house of laborers and a house of worshipers, and you can tell. So we're so great to be here, so honored to be amongst you all. So thank you again for welcoming us and allowing us to worship with you. Well, and Gloria cheers. <laughs> well, one thing I know in this season, I've learned that obedience is better than sacrifice. Um, in this side of the pulpit, preachers, musicians, and so on and so on and so on, you get all types of opportunities that comes to you. And you have to be obedient because that's the only way that you're going to end up where you're supposed to be. All opportunities is not supposed to be taken. But obedience will get you to the right place at the right time with the right people. Yesterday, like my wife said, when we were in the office, I didn't know that I was going to be in the office at that particular time. I didn't know that Bishop Reed was going to be in the office walking around, figuring out whatever they, he was figuring out at the time. But there was a supernatural download that took place in that office. I will never forget it. But if it was not for the obedience and the yes that I gave to God in August concerning this man, I would not have gotten that. So alignment and timing is so crucial right now for every gift that's in the body of Christ. And Bishop, 
All I want to say to you is thank you. Thank you to your boys. Thank you. Pastor Doug, the wings were wonderful. We got one more place to go. <laughs> and Bishop, I love you. The Mayfields love you. Give them one more big God bless you. I had the privilege uh, many years ago of meeting Apostle Dwayne Hardin at a conference in Ohio. And, uh, you know, you meet a lot of people, uh, but then there are those that you encounter and you connect with and you know that it's a God appointment. You know that it's a God meeting. And... Uh, I just immediately sensed his discernment, his integrity, his commitment to the kingdom of God, and we stayed friends for years. And then two things happened. Number one, I was able to bring him to Israel uh, on the same trip that I met Pastor Doug. So Pastor Doug and Apostle Duane and I were all in Israel on that same trip. It was 2016, I think it was, was that trip. And... Uh, and he really got the Israel understanding in a, in a powerful way on that trip. But then, several years later, tragedy struck our nation. Uh, there was the terrible uprising after the death of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, the, in, the incredible um, pain that went through our nation, the division that went through our nation. And it started to come right through the body of Christ. And Apostle Duane reached out to me and he said, Bishop, we've, we've got we've to take a stand against this thing. And he reached out to me and we began meeting. And when I say constantly, we met constantly for probably two years, bringing together pastors from all across the nation, uh, African-American pastors and Caucasian pastors primarily because that was the, the primary tension of the moment. And we built a wall of protection around the body of Christ. And we said, we are not allowing, we are not allowing this thing to get into our spirit. You know, the Bible says that uh, beware of a root of bitterness uh, that can spring up and then defile many. And I will always honor you. Uh, you know, nobody, nobody gave you an honorarium. Nobody paid you for your time. You just saw the need and the body of Christ to take a stand in that hour. And we partnered together on that for close to two years. And um, uh, he's not here to preach today. He is here. He's with our brother Darius Pridgen in a couple hours to do an installation of a pastor downtown. He's here with Pastor Darius Pridgen to install some pastors there. But I never want to have a, a vessel of this caliber in. I, I, found, I found he was coming to Buffalo like 72 hours ago. I said, you're coming to Buffalo. You're coming to church. And so I sent Luke. Thank you, Luke. Where's Luke? Where is Luke? Luke is somewhere. But there's Luke right there. Uh, Luke went down and, and picked him up. Thank you, Luke, for serving. That way we appreciate you guys so much. And, and um, so I do have a word I'm going to bring. Um, but I want you to just open your heart. And how many know the Holy Ghost can do a lot in a, a few minutes? So basically what I'm saying is you're going to get two for the price of one this morning. All right? That's what we're... Would you welcome... Come on, give your love to Apostle Dwayne Hardin. Can you all do me a favor and give God the greatest shout of victory that you can? No, we can do better than that. Give him more. He deserves so much more. The Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. The Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. Do me a favor before you sit down and take your seat. We need to do this in this order. Let us first thank God for uh, Pastor Doug Reed, who has come and uh, I see a significant uh, impact that he's making, and I'm proud of you. Um, I didn't know, uh, well, I didn't know I was so old. Let me say it that way. 
And I, I want to thank God for you. I honor you. He was in my hometown of Youngstown, Ohio, which is where I met uh, Bishop Reed many years ago. Would y'all thank God for your pastor, uh, a, sing, a pastor that assists? The legacy of this house is alive and well. Um, uh, and the legacy is birthed out of Bishop Tommy Reed, who is everybody in the world's friend. Um, would you all thank God for Bishop Tommy Reed? I love you. I want to thank God for my friends, Al and Deb, who are just great. They've been to my house, ate my food, and make me feel like they uh, enjoyed it. Amen. Uh, and before I have you sit down, would you all uh, do me a favor? We're going to honor uh, Bishop uh, Robert Stearns in just a second, but I need to recognize his boys, um, who I love to pieces. Uh, they are incredible young men, and um, we, we love them. I'm a preacher's kid, so I understand the dynamics of being a, a pastor's kid, and so these young men are not in trouble, they're not on drugs, they're not fighting, they love each other, they love God. Would you thank God for them? I love you guys. That's right. I'm trying hard to get hair like those guys, I'm trying. And uh, my, my friend, uh, we don't call each other friend only. We call each other brother. Um, and it's not like brother Dwayne or brother Robert. It's like I feel so connected to this guy. He and I have been close ever since we met. Um, and uh, your bishop, Robert, has been a friend. We talk not a whole lot, but when we do, we make sure that we catch up. And when we do, we talk with purpose and meaning. Um, sometimes he's in Israel, and sometimes he's here or there, or I'm there or here. And um, we get together. Um, this man is responsible for a move of God that would not have existed had he not been alive. I don't think you know the impact that is being made through eagle's wings. I don't think you know the impact because sometimes we take our own very casually. We don't know the power of honor. And um, this man deserves, if I was preaching today, it would be on the topic of honor. Honor means to know the value and the worth of. And um, this man is a incredible, incredible man to raise three boys to go through crisis, to go and uh, take people back and forth to Israel and to uh, also maintain his integrity, to have class and dignity and to be honorable. You all need to know that you are uh, standing on the shoulders of Bishop Tommy Reed is a great man, one of the greatest men in the earth today, Bishop Robert Stearns. Would you honor him today? No, that's horrible. You got to do better than that. Yeah. You may be seated. You may be seated. I, I don't want to belabor you. Um, let me see. Okay. Now, the, the Lord gave me a few things that I, I'm going to share with you. Uh, um, I was praying. I was, I, I didn't call. I normally would talk to Al and Deb and call Bishop uh, uh, Tommy and let them know I'm coming. I didn't call anybody except for Bishop Reed, I mean uh, Stearns, and I told him I'm coming. He's about right. It was about 72, 72 hours, and he says, come to the church, and he made everything so easy. And so I'm here today. I want you to catch these points that the Lord put on my heart. Um, um, there, there are a couple things, and, and um, you need to understand that you're in the middle of a revival season. Um, I heard the Lord say something very clear to me while I was sitting there, and he said, I, I want to start a revival in this house again. 
Now, I don't know the complete history of this church, but I do know it was built off of a move of God. Right? There was miracles, signs, and wonders. And, and um, what triggered me even further was when the young lady who came up uh, that Bishop said she was dealing with cancer and she's dancing around, you would swear up and down nothing was wrong with her. Um, this day, now hear me, hear me. This day is a spark of a new day. This is a spark of a new day. Um, I need you to hear me. This is a sparking of a new day. I went to uh, Psalm chapter 2 when you brought it up. I went to verse 8. And uh, verse 8 was really fascinating to me. Um, he said, ask of me and I shall give you uh, the heathen. Uh, for your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. Now, number eight, verse eight is, a, the, is what sparked me. And he's, that's a, a new beginning. Eight is the number of a new beginning. And this is what he said. In order for this new beginning to trigger, he says, I need you to ask of me. Wow. He said, ask of me. Now, that's the word of the Lord. He said, begin to ask of me. Uh, so I began asking. And, and what I ask of the Lord is what he put in my spirit prophetically. So I'm going to proclaim this. I'm going to release it to you. One thing that the Lord is wanting to uh, uh, reignite, Amy, if you will, is that he wants to mix this church in the flavor that he ordained for it. Are you catching me? Um, he's saying, I am about to sprinkle this church uh, with some salt and pepper. There, there is, uh, he says, I'm bringing in the heathen and I'm bringing in nations. Nations that you don't know yet. Or have not really uh, recognized as a part of what he wants to do here. Um, your bishop is a man of flavor. He's a man uh, that carries great weight in the spirit. I need you to hear me. He carries great weight. Um, one of the things that I love about him is that I will never ever find a racist bone in his body. Right? That, that sounds simple and easy because many of you say I'm not racist and it's not a, a battle of whether you're racist or not. It's a battle of can you get into the fire with me? And he has the ability to go in the fire with me and then walk out with me with his arm around me. Are you following me? And so the church has to reflect who he is. And there is a shifting that is taking place. And God is saying, I need you to start asking of me. I saw this in the spirit where the Lord said, I'm calling for revival nights at the tabernacle. I don't know what Revival Nights is going to look like, but it's going to be where people will come and there will be strong worship and strong prayer. And it's like uh, just, it'll start off with 10 people showing up. And before you know it, the whole city is going to be coming just to get in the presence of the Lord. And they're going to be called Revival Nights, just a flow of the Spirit. I saw the tabernacle being, a tabernacle is different from a temple because the tabernacle is adjustable to change. So whenever they moved from one location, they had to pick up the tabernacle and shift it. So they had to change locations. Are you following me? And I'm, I'm going to say this, and I don't mean to, I don't mean to, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just me, okay? The Lord says the, tabern, the tab has become too stiff. And he says, now I need you to shift. He said, it's time for movement. Everybody say move. Take your hands and move. Do something to move. Move, 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 move. In fact, point to every empty space around you and declare new, seat, new, uh, new, new, new uh, people. Call them in. Call in black people. Call in uh, Latino people. Call in white people. Do it. Do it. Look and call them in. Say, come quickly. Say, come quickly. Say, come to the tab. Come to the tab. Come to the tab. Do it. Say, come to the tab. Glory, glory, glory. And um, so the, this is going to happen 
And it's going to happen so fast. Um, the Lord says, if you follow the pattern, I want you to get this. Bishop Stearns does not have to be here all the time. Now, a lot of people are uncomfortable with that. But you need to hear this by the Spirit. You need to honor him in his absence. Please hear me. You must honor him in his absence because he's building something bigger outside than he could do locked up inside. Are you following this? So please, please get this in your spirit. He is not required to hold my hand. Pastor Doug holds your hand. And we thank God that Bishop uh, Tommy is alive because his wisdom is still just permeating throughout the air. And there are things coming, there are things coming from him in the days to come that are going to really spark new things. There's a historical, re, uh, uh, there's a historical moment that he he has to release some things that he even forgot about. The Lord's going to bring all these things to his remembrance, and you're going to be blessed by that. I'm moving real quick. I got about two minutes. I wanted to do this in. Um, Michael, your son, the Lord said, I'm putting a prophet in him. Shh, shh, one second, one second. I, I need my time. Um, God's making him into a prophet. He, he's already a prophet, right? But he says, I am sending Michael to fight for Israel. He says, I am making him a voice. He's going to carry like an, an evangelistic power and the voice of a prophet. And many young men are going to give their life to the Lord, Yeshua, Hamashiach, in Israel because of Michael's voice. He's going to use all your boys. All of them are going to be powerful. But there's an assignment. I had to be specific today on Michael. He's going to be like the angel of the Lord, the warrior who will go in and government will recognize him and government will honor the voice because he has taken on the spirit of the people. So I declare over you, Michael, raise your hands. That you shall prophesy. You shall prophesy and bring correction to the wrong areas. And your voice shall lead many young men to honor the Lord, the Most High, the God of Israel, Yeshua HaMashiach. They shall say, I now know who Adonai is. And a revival will spread and break out. You will experience some persecution. But son, says the Lord, I will make you great. I will make you effective. And my hand shall always be upon you, says the Spirit of the Lord. We bless him. We bless him. Bishop, can I lay hands on him? You mind? Come, come, come here, Michael. This morning, driving here, this morning, Michael said, Dad, I want to talk to you about something on the drive. I said, sure, son. He said, Dad, I want to make sure it's okay with you, but I know that God has called me as soon as I turn 18 to join the Israeli army to make Aliyah. He started to describe to me the specific unit in the army that he feels God has called him to. The name of the unit and what he will do in that. He started, that was our entire conversation driving here this morning. This is prophetic ministry, brothers and sisters. This is the spirit of the Lord. Which is crazy because when he walked into the office, I started to say to him, 
um, are you making Aliyah? <sighs> Father, the grace of the prophet rest upon him. Lord he will see things that will break his heart but you've given him a voice to speak to those things ha. we love you and we bless you in the name of Yeshua amen amen one more once, once more would you open your mouth and clap your hands and give God so much praise that he deserves no, 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 you got to do better than that. We, this is the most high. Come on, give it to him. Don't you love it when God orchestrates a service? Apostle Dwayne, first of all, that's why, that's how you understand my boy said, what's an apostle? I mean, he just came in and if you were listening, he set structure and order into the atmosphere. He gave us guideposts and signposts to understand where we are and where God is taking us. And this is the ministry gift of an apostle. You heard him take time and he said, if I, if I was going to preach this morning, I would be preaching on honor. And he didn't know this, but we had set aside time this morning. I wanted to this morning. And it's appropriate that we do this. I know, I know I'm aware of the time. Denny's is going to be there at 1 o'clock. I promise you, it will still be there. They're not going to run out of eggs and salad or whatever you have. But I want to ask Pastor Amy to come and stand with me. And I want to ask Pastor Doug and Sam to come and stand with me. This is, we're in the middle of Pastor Appreciation Month. And I want to tell you, we are blessed in this house with the ministry and the pastors God has given us in this place. We have, amen, amen. Pastor Sam's loving to have this baby here. I don't know, you know. You're, yeah, Pastor Doug's getting worried. You know, Quiverful is technically five. Scripturally, technically it's five. I'm just saying. And we're so blessed. We, I mean, I mean, uh, Mike Wolf is doing such an incredible job with TYA and the young adults and... and uh, Chloe is doing an amazing job with the kids. Kayla's helping with the um, media. Luke and Laura Arcadapani are running the food pantry now, doing an incredible. We are blessed in this house. Pastor Joanne, we celebrated last week. Uh, so many others. Don't, don't get me in trouble for the roster of names. But, but I want to tell you, these right here, these pastors I rely on to steer the ship and to uh, 
guide and guard the house, and we are blessed to have them in our midst. And I said in the first service, I said they're like bookends because they just finished their first year, and she <laughs> is finishing her <laughs> year. <laughs> we won't say how many years she's been here. She, she grew up under the pew. But we want to honor them today. And so we just have these gifts on behalf of a grateful church. This is a grateful people. You go ahead, Mike. This is a grateful people. This is a grateful church. Come on, can we just thank God for them? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. Don't go anywhere, Aaron. Stay right there. There we go. <laughs> You're just pulling me into that glory. <clears throat> Luke chapter 21 says this. I'm gonna, for time's sake, I'm going to go very quickly. The message this morning is simple. Um, Jesus said... Take heed that you be not deceived. We're starting, I think, around verse uh, 8 or 9. Many will come in my name saying, I am he, and the time is drawn near. Don't go after them. But then you will hear of wars, rumors of wars. Do not be terrified, for these things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. Then he said, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes in various places, famines, and pandemics. And there'll be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they'll lay their hands on you, persecute you, delivering you to the synagogue and prison. You'll be brought before kings and rulers for my sake. But it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Somebody say testimony. Therefore, settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you'll answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. You'll be betrayed even by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends. Some of you, as we are facing this war in Israel, some of you are going through this right now, some of your family is not on the same page with you. Some will even be put to death. You'll be hated by all for my name's sake. But not a hair of your head shall be lost. A scripture I've never been able to claim. I heard you, Pete Wayand. I don't even have to look. I know exactly who amen to me over there. Fifth row back on the aisle. By your patience, possess your souls. But when you see all that, all that, all that, all that, all that, but, but when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then you know the desolation is near. Everything we just read before, he said, that's going to come, don't worry, that'll be happening. But when you see the armies coming around Jerusalem, then you know the time is near. Then let those in Judea flee to the mountains in the midst of her depart. Let those who are in the country enter, for these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant and those nursing babies. What did we just see? What did we just see done to pregnant women and those nursing babies in Gaza, in 
the border town from Hamas. What did we see done? For there will be great distress in the land and upon the people, and then they will fall by the edge of the sword. And be led away, kidnapped, hostages. I'm reading to you the headlines of your news over the past two weeks, line by line, line by line. And Jerusalem will be trampled until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There'll be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, on the earth, distress of nations, perplexity, the sea and waves roaring, distress of nations. Now we hear Syria, now we hear Iran, now we hear Turkey. The nations are rumbling. Men's hearts, 26, failing them for fear, the expectation of those things which are coming in there for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. That's what was happening this morning in the midst of worship. Pastor Amy was leading us, the dethroning of principalities and powers, the enthroning of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace. We release his king. How does God reign? God sits enthroned where? Where? He sits enthroned on, on good doctrine? Sits enthroned on excellent programs for every demographic in your city? Where does God sit enthroned? On the praises of his people. You want to release his throne? You want to release his dominion? You want to release his power in a situation? Release your praise. Release your worship. Release your praise. Something shifts when you praise. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to happen. I am a child of the 70s. Jesus was coming before 1986. We had a top 10 list of antichrists. We, our antichrist test was multiple choice. You could, you, could, you could pick them. We were never going to see the year 2000. Never. And if we ever did, we'd all be flying on cars like the Jetsons. The Jetson. If you don't, you kids, if you don't know who the Jetsons are, you haven't lived. I mean, it just... And so I have, hear me, I have inside of me an inner skepticism about the last days. Because every preacher who came through every third week told you, here's my chart, here it is, here's it lined up. We've got about, you know, 27 days left before the rapture. So I have an inner skepticism when we look at world events to quickly say, Oh, this is the end. The end is here. But can I tell you something? I am 55 years old. I have never seen anything like we're seeing right now. I have never seen anything. We're literally line by line. We are reading literally what is happening in front of our eyes. We're living in a generation that calls evil good and good evil. We're living in a moment where deception has so filled the minds of the educated. Why? Because they have knowledge and not wisdom. Why? Because wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. And if you are eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil instead of eating of the tree of life, then you are going to be puffed up and become a God unto yourself. And then you are going to bear the wrath of God Almighty. We are living in the midst of the full manifestation of full Darwinian humanism. Life has no meaning. 
There is no imago dei. There is no image of God. We're just dirt. That's the joyful life of the far woke left. That's on one hand, and on the other hand, radical Islam. Submit to Allah or die. Another teenage girl I saw yesterday, another one killed in Iran for not wearing the hijab. 16-year-old girl killed by the morality police. They found her in a subway station. Her hijab was not on properly, and they killed her. And the idiots in America are marching in the streets in support of the demonized Hamas leadership while the church stays in our happy, clappy, charismatic glory bubble, utterly detached from reality. But God has a people. But God has a remnant. And there's a remnant that's about to rise in the earth. Those who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. There is a remnant in the earth that knows that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers. Of, there's a rem, there's an Esther church arising. There's a Deborah church arising. There's a David church arising. The lion of the tribe of Judah is about to roar in the nations of the earth. Be seated. God says this. God says this. Put those verses back up, please. God says, when you see all of this, when you see all of this, I'm telling you what, last night I went on social media. I was just such a mess. And for me to have to go, I don't, these buttons you got to push. You got to this and you got to that. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I, my, my kids were not home. Da I know where Danny Kubia, I said, I don't know if I called Danny Kubia. Where are you, Danny? I called Danny. I said, Danny, how do I get on Facebook? True story. He said, Bishop, I'm driving. Hold on, let me pull over. I'll get you on Facebook. It's a true story. Why? Because we got to lift our voice. Because the world has gone crazy. Folks, this is, we're talking, this is it. If you don't understand what I'm about to say, please hear me. Israel is not at war. We are at war. Hamas has declared war on all the civilized world. They're coming for the little Satan, Israel, and then the big Satan, America. That is their twisted theo-fascist theology. Do you know who's suffering the most? Muslims. Muslims suffer horribly under Hamas and Hezbollah. But God has a people. I want to say this to you. Now when these things begin to happen, this is what the Lord told me to tell you. God says this, lift up your heads because your redemption draws nigh. What do I want to say to us this morning, Tabernacle? What does God want to say to you? God wants to say to you, lift up your heads. How are we going to handle this stress? How are we going to handle this difficulty? How are we going to handle everything? We're going to lift up our heads. Three things, and we're going to let you go. Number one, lift up your head from distraction. We've got those slides. Lift up your heads from distraction. The enemy wants to keep us distracted. I want each and every one of you right now to think, what are you distracted by? Maybe it's this. I don't know what it is for you. Maybe it's an addiction, stronghold, something you're giving too much attention to. It's a distraction. God says, cut it off. Cut it off. You don't have time to play games right now. The Bible says, 
be still and then you will know. A lot of us want to know God. We want to know why God's not showing up in our situation, but we're not being still. I was praying this week and God said to me, I want you to listen. God said to me, he said, I want you to listen. I listened. I listened. I didn't hear anything. I said, God, I, I, don't, I don't hear anything. God said, I want you to listen. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm not hearing anything. I said, God, I don't hear anything. God said, I didn't call you, or I didn't tell you to hear. I told you to listen. Slap me upside the head. God said, I didn't say I was going to say something. I said, I want the posture of your heart to be listening. I want the position of your life to be, I'm listening, Lord. I'm listening, Lord. Do you know the best employee, the best follower, the best son, the best helper? You know the best one? The one that's just there. And the second you say, boom. Why? Because they're listening. They're right there. You don't have to send... 14 texts and three emails and smoke signals. They're just there, ready, at attention. God said, you're looking to hear something. I'm telling you, I want your life in a position of listening. When is the last time you just sat down and said, God, I'm just listening? And God, whether you speak or not, I'm going to wait for you. My soul is going to wait expectantly for God. So how are we going to overcome in this season? We're going to lift our heads off of distraction. Number two, we're going to lift our heads off of denial. Most of the West is in one of three things. I'm, I'm doing this super fast. Most of the West is in one of three things. Number one, either willful ignorance, willful ignorance. Because if you want to understand this situation, you just got to teach yourself. But if you're going to just be led by clickbait emotionalism, and you're just going to grab a headline, and you're going to say, oh, there's the oppressed and the oppressors, and you're going to get pulled into a narrative that has nothing to do with the actual facts, that's willful ignorance. Number two is this, deception. Deception is similar to willful ignorance, but a little bit different. Why? Because a lie, believing a lie, I don't understand it all, I'm not a neurologist, but if you believe something and you believe it more and more and over and over and deeper and deeper, it forms a pathway in your brain. And you can become convinced of a lie because you're convinced of it. That's the power of propaganda. Tell the lie over and over and over and over again. So it's similar to ignorance, but it's somewhat different because you now, that thing has taken root in you. That's what's happening in our college and university campuses. The third is evil. Plain, ordinary, horrific evil. Somehow a generation after the Holocaust, we've forgotten that evil exists. We have forgotten that there are evil people in this world who don't want peace, don't want coexistence, don't want to get, they are bent on evil. And you do not negotiate with evil, you eradicate evil, you obliterate evil, evil is done away with. These are the three things we're facing, and many in the West are in denial about this. Well, we just have to understand. We just have to. No. No. You're. And we're, we're talking about pastors. 
We're talking about a lot of pastors. Well, we have to negotiate. We have to comp. No, you don't negotiate with Hitler. Neville Chamberlain, do you, under, do you read history? Neville Chamberlain tried to negotiate with his, Hitler. And he came back, he gave him Czechoslovakia. And he came back to Britain, he said, we have peace now in our time. And Winston Churchill said, you're crazy. You've just empowered him and made this worse. You're going to make things for the Palestinians worse if you don't eradicate Hamas. Do you care for the Palestinians? Get rid of Hamas. This is my seeker-sensitive Sunday morning service. I know you can all. For all you visitors, God bless you. <laughs> Lift up your heads. That's how we're going to get through this. We're not going to look at the circumstance. We're not going to look at, we'll, we'll be aware of those things, but our reality is fixed in another place and another time. Our reality is fixed from a different voice. Finally, number three. Lift up your head from discouragement. I understand. I do. It is easy in this season to get discouraged. Lord only knows what we're about to face through our own political cycle. Lord only knows what we're going to face. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness on Christ, the solid rock I stand. I'm lifting my head. Why? My redemption is drawing nigh. I don't know if this is it. This might be it. When I read Luke 21 and I read CNN and Fox headlines, it's line by line. This might be it. But whether this is it or whether this is preparation, I know this. Our response is the same thing. I'm lifting my head. I'm not going to be distracted any longer. I'm not going to be in denial. Let's just be in denial. And I'm not going to be discouraged because he who promised is faithful. Stand with me. Then Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all you with our benediction in just a moment. It's beautiful to see the Slades with us here this morning. I wish we had time to greet you more properly, but we love you. We thank God for you. We bless you. You're such an important part of our family. As we close this morning, this is what I want you to do. I want you to think, what am I distracted by? What am I in denial about? What am I ignoring? What am I pushing away? What am I discouraged about? I want you to think of it. And this is what we're all going to do in a moment. I want you to have that in your mind. And in one moment, what we're going to do is this. We're going to lift our heads. We're going to lift our heads because our Redeemer draws nigh. Are you ready? You ready? Lift your head to Him. Look up, look up, your redemption, your redeemer, he's drawing nigh. He's drawing nigh to your situation. He's drawing nigh to your family. He's drawing nigh to Israel. He's drawing nigh to his creation. Lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. One more time. 
On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand Can I ask quickly if the prayer team can come? Prayer team, would you come and stand quickly, quickly, quickly across the front? If you're here this morning and you've got a prayer burden, you've got a need, you need someone to touch and agree with you, these prayer warriors are here to pray with you. We're going to dismiss right now. Give me 30 seconds. 30 seconds and we'll dismiss. But if, you've, if you're facing a diagnosis, a financial problem, something's overwhelming your life, they're here to pray with you. They're here to agree with you. Now, would you lift your hand to receive the Lord's blessing this morning? God, you have met with us today. You have spoken and we have heard. But God, we also want to be those who listen even when you're in a season of silence because that's when we're still and we know that you are God. Bless your people, God. God, this morning we bless Israel. We bless Israel. We ask you, God, give her sure and complete and swift victory. God, we pray. God, we pray for the Palestinian people. God, that you would rid them of the evil of Hamas. That you would rid them, God, of the violence that has seeped into that culture. And that, God, there would be a path forward for a future and a hope for the precious Palestinian people, God. Prince of Peace, come and reign. We lift our eyes to you. And now the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you and the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord surround you with songs of deliverance every day this week. May your cup be filled to overflowing and may you remember that goodness and mercy are following after you. And may you walk in the shalom, the peace of the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we declare it. And all God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Lift up your heads. Before you leave, greet our guests, greet the Mayfields, greet Apostle Dwayne, hug somebody, love somebody. The cafe is open. We will see you Tuesday night. What time, Pastor Doug? Tuesday night, 6.30. Tuesday night, 6.30. God bless you. Go in the grace of the Lord.